know, it's incredibly dangerous work making a documentary. That's why I'm standing here on a glorious beach in the Caribbean, my feet lapped by lukewarm water with a dog named Flipper. Ironic, isn't it? Today I'm going to swim with a dolphin, one that's trained to swim with humans for fish. God knows what'll happen. All I know is I'm here, and the dolphin's out there working for scale. I don't know what I'm going to meet today. Possibly, maybe the one dolphin that worked with George C. Scott. Pa loves Pa. Brought me a gift just in case, and I'm, I'm sure they'll look at me and go, man, that's for like the, just like the aquarium dolphins, man. The white man has transformed those dolphins into aquarium dolphins working for fish. I don't know what they're like, except they're smooth, fast, bright, playful. Sounds like Sharon Stone, doesn't it? Maybe I'll get the Jack Nick to see the dolphins going, where's your fish, smart boy? Wearing a little too much fur for the sea, aren't you, pal? Or maybe you get the one that does this. Swims backwards. Maybe I'll just get a kind of a Brando dolphin that just kind of says, talk to me. I have some ideas. Shallow water seems to be right, but you're nothing but a messenger boy. What, Slipper? What are you saying? Baby, uh, uh, the boat's how many feet underwater? Uh, uh, 500? Uh, five. Or maybe you have basically your yuppie dolphins. They're there and just saying, gosh, Tom, you've got to come over here. This salmon is fabulous. I don't know. Or maybe they're just gentle, sweet fish that don't say anything, just look at you like, you smell bad. They're here. Showtime. Here he comes. Hello, pal. so enchanted by these strange creatures. Thank you. <laughs> you never forget your first encounter with a dolphin. Their amazing, sleek, smooth shape. But most of all, the look in their eye and that extraordinary smile on an almost human face. <laughs> My own relationship seemed to be off to a good start. But like all animals, they're sensitive and on the first day, I think I must have touched one somewhere it didn't much like. And this was the first date. He got a bit aggressive. I got rammed. He made his point, and I learned. Okay, pal. It was amazing. They're so... Amazingly playful, and I guess I'm one of the only human beings on the planet who can piss off a dolphin. On this first day, I had already learned an important lesson. I really wanted to understand these creatures, but there was a lot more that I needed to know if I was going to get close to them in the wild. journey takes me now to tropical Hawaii. Well, underground. Here in this facility on the island of Oahu, Dr. Ken Martin is studying bottlenose dolphins. Dr. Robin, Robin, how are you? Welcome to the Earth Trust Lab. You'll be able to see the dolphins very close here. 
the dolphins often come and actually see what we're doing. So they're right. observing you too? That's right. <laughs> you set up an experiment and they're all here observing the primates doing an experiment. They're probably making their notes on us. It's amazing. Sometimes they even come and knock on the window to get the human's attention. Yes. Mutual observation. Well, there's definitely someone in there, and that's what we're studying. Ken Martin has an underwater sound system that enables him to listen to the dolphins. Uh, you want to listen to them? Sure. And you want to talk to them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, elephant? <laughs> Actually, one of the dolphins makes a sound just like that. Really? Sheep sound, yeah. <laughs> That's him right there. He went, <laughs> don't dig you, man. <laughs> really a bad yeah. sheep. <laughs> dolphins communicate with each other by using pulses of sound. And I tried just about every sound I knew to attract their attention, but they weren't interested. <laughs> they were the worst audience that I've ever had. And Chucky Street coming around again, it's a bubble nose derby. Well, maybe not as bad as that Japanese bar mitzvah. Here they are. So it's the high notes that interest them. I found out that dolphins communicate using high frequencies, much higher than the human voice, and that their conversations are rapid, ten times as fast as ours. I want to say that life is like a box of chocolate. We can turn you, turn you up faster. I know to you it sounds a lot like this. Okay, I bored her again. I drunk. <laughs> wow. That's getting there. They're probably saying, yeah, oh, God, going, these filth dogs pretty damn slow. Aquatically <laughs> challenged. <laughs> well, they're not like us, and they, they can't see with sonar. Aquatically handicapped. Yeah, please help. <laughs> yeah, I see them up there, and they have their little cars, and they go fast. Ooh. And they see them come in the water, and they have their little fins. Ooh. But they can't click. They can't fish. Oh, they scare me. Dr. Martin has discovered that dolphins have a strong sense of who they are. In science, this self-awareness is tested by showing an animal its own reflection in a mirror. Most animals attack a mirror because they think that the image that they see is another animal. But dolphins seem to have a sense of awareness that that is their own reflection that they're looking at. Can you turn the lights out, please? Okay, now it's a perfect mirror for them. They can't see in here at all. The dolphins seem to gaze at themselves just like we do in the bathroom mirror. It's as if they're saying, am I putting on weight? Maybe I should cut back on the mackerel. Recognizing yourself in the mirror may seem pretty straightforward, but only a few animals are capable of this. In fact, only highly evolved creatures like the great apes and humans are self-aware. Dolphins seem to have a very strong sense of their own individuality. Perhaps they have a consciousness or maybe even a sense of humor. <laughs> to find out more, I wanted to meet someone with a close relationship with a wild dolphin. I've heard that on the Turks and Caicos Islands, east of Cuba, there's a wild dolphin that seems to like human companionship, and one human in particular. This is the home of Dean Bernal, a marine biologist who has got to know a very special bottlenose dolphin named Jojo. Uh, yeah, Lisa, this is Dean. I wanted to find out if you've seen Jojo around today there anywhere. Yeah, we'll probably come down and take a look, um, probably about 20 minutes or so. The place is a shrine to the study of Jojo the dolphin. Yeah, yeah, we'll be down there. 
All right, I was standing by on 6-8. A sample of fish the dolphin regurgitated. Hey, Rob, you want to go down and take a look see if JoJo's there? Let's do it. OK, great. What was it like the first time you went? Scary. Fear. I heard all sorts of stories about him attacking people and biting people. But you know what really happened after I got to know him? I, I realized he never attacked anybody. He, he only defended himself when people went after him. Wow. Yeah, I tell you, Robin. Apparently, he, Jojo likes Dean to meet his girlfriends. Sometimes he'll show off his girlfriends. He'll bring them over. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you swim next to him, he gets jealous and he pushes you away. Really? And then he pushes them away. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a dynamite signature. You know nothing about her. <laughs> Dean Bernal became Jojo's warden, but his duties also include teaching people about the natural history of the wild dolphins that live among the coral reefs of Turks and Caicos. I traveled in the Aquanaut, a special boat for viewing the coral gardens. It's a trimaran, and the central hull is a viewing chamber. I felt like Captain Nemo, traveling in a giant glass hot dog. Turtle. It's coming out. Look, there he goes. It's an ancient turtle pursued by remora fish coming to check out the furry Caucasian comedian. And here's another reef species, Dean Bernal. Dean and Jojo have known each other for almost 10 years. Dean believes that Jojo was orphaned when his family was stranded on a beach and died. Dolphins like to live in groups, and so this lonely survivor sought other species for company. Dean's amazing ability in the water made him the perfect companion, and he found himself with a great opportunity to study a wild dolphin's behavior. Dean is starting to recognize the clicks and whistles and can tell whether Jojo's sonar has located something edible, inedible, or something to play with. Rubbing against anchor ropes may get rid of remoras and parasites, or maybe it just feels nice. <laughs> now you know why the dolphin plays. <laughs> See? Sight gag. Good. Lobster, good. Shellfish, empty. <laughs> it's like even the dolphin's going, I like him. The fact that he can hold his breath for about four minutes, I think, to a dolphin is like, I like that. I mean, he must not seem like a regular human to them. And they obviously have a physical comedy. They're playing off of that. I mean, when he does a barrel roll, and then Jojo does a barrel roll, they're playing together like they're watching. It's like a group of kids. And sharing things like kids, it's like what he's sharing. <laughs> he brings things to the dolphin, like chains, and the dolphin brings things like his lobster jewelry. They like sharing toys. <laughs> Expression is almost like what? Hey, come on! It's a kind of, if you want to put a word to it, what? Hey, hey! It kind of goes up and then a little down and back up. Like, I've been around 30 million years. I like you guys. You're wild. I'm, I'm a dolphin. I'm a mammal. We're party mammals. I think Jojo and Dino like party mammals. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised that dolphins and humans get along so well. We're both playful, curious, social species. The real difference, of course, is that they live in the ocean and we live on the land. Although, as we shall see, it hasn't always been this way. Sixty million years ago, it was here. Or maybe it was here. 
or some place very much like here, that an evolutionary choice was made. It was a choice of some ancient mammal to return to its roots in the sea and evolve into what we know as the dolphin. What was this animal like? What strange biological curiosity was it? Well, it was the ancestor of the cow. That's right. Flossie, your ancestors made a choice, and I'd like you to make that choice with me again today. Because it's time to play You Bet Your Species! Come on down! We're going in, we're going to lose the hooves and the horns and get a blowhole and fin. Your choices are stay on the land and have your teeth sucked by a metal machine or return to the open ocean. Yes, I see there's doubts, but look at the good side. You won't end up at McDonald's. There, look, it's warm. You'll swim free. You'll be able to breach and jump. Okay, let's think about this again. You're right. That's why it takes 60 million years. It doesn't happen in one day. It takes a while. Maybe, you know, you put a hoof forward one day. Another day, a hoof. Let's do it inch at a time. Cows really are the distant cousin to dolphins and whales. Ooh. They found fossils of a missing link with hooves on its flippers. You'll lose the horns. That's the only giveaway. And the hooves. All right, maybe Darwin was wrong. Say, do what you want. It's your choice. But millions of years of evolution in a totally different environment have fashioned a much smarter mammal. Right. One that can even be taught a human language. Dr. Herman, Dr. Herman is in the laboratory. <laughs> Dr. Herman has trained several bottlenose dolphins at his facility in Honolulu to understand a special form of sign language. Remarkably, they can comprehend around 60 words. Now, this will be now a right basket surfboard fetch. Okay. Dr. Herman has found out that dolphins essentially have the same kind of ability to develop language as we do. Like us, they understand the effect of word order. Take the frisbee to the surfboard is different from take the surfboard to the frisbee. In this way, they can understand around 2,000 sentences. Dr. Herman's work over 10 years has demonstrated that a dolphin's large brain, physically larger than our own, has a great capacity for understanding language. And so we'll take the dolphin over there, Alele, the young female, and we'll bring her over to that, uh, what we call a coic box. The research facility has also been looking at the dolphin's ability to use sonar, the ability to see underwater with sound. Dr. Herman showed me an experiment with an object concealed in a box. In! Two possible answers are displayed. The goggles are to prevent the dolphin seeing the researcher's eyes, where they might pick up a clue to the correct answer. She looks at the one on her left. She swims to her right. And she says, that's the one that's inside the box. She's pretty definite about it. Correct. <laughs> and uh, we'll have uh, Judd come over and show us what's, can you show us what's in the box, please? And that is a correct response. <laughs> Next trial. Okay, objects in, please. There they go. This is for the trip to the Bahamas. The second question is for the trip to the Bahamas. Bring your rubber plates, Matthias. Okay, let's go. Come on. Dr. Herman believes that dolphins form an image of an object using the clicks and echoes. It doesn't matter whether they see it or sonar it, the image is the same. In. Their sonar is so sophisticated that they can distinguish between abstract and complicated objects that they have never seen before. These are all abstract shapes. They're actually made of PVC sand filled to reduce any internal reflection. Oh, so she couldn't. Right, so we just want to emphasize the surface features because that's what vision sees. That's yeah, a pretty complex three-dimensional object, too. Like Very, yeah, and there'll be a whole bunch like that. It's taken literally years to build up the rapport with the dolphins here. Thousands of hours are spent teaching them, and today, the researchers are teaching me. Okay. Pay attention, watch the guy. 
Don't be vocal. Be happy. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Even I got excited, Ellie. All right. All right. I'll get myself okay. a fish. Mm, okay. Okay, let's see what we do now, Ellie. Turn around. You can wait okay, ready? Hands. Ellie, you can pay attention. Ready? Good, very good. And... Good girl! <laughs> good girl, Ellie. <laughs> okay, when we have a sign, it means creative. The sign is... I don't know, just okay. saying, but ready? you put energy into it, she'll put energy into it. Okay, so ready? Pay attention. Ellie, pay attention. Ready? <laughs> yeah, I don't know! <laughs> now we'll see what she does. Oh! Yeah! Woo-hoo! Oh! <laughs> All right, very good. You can give a couple of fish, right? All right, couple of fish. Let's try your foot action. Okay, Ellie, ready? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> don't give her that one, it's scary. No, don't give that one. Give that to the... That's someone. for me! Ah. <laughs> give her another one. Okay. Oh, you do. I did. Okay. One more. Yeah. Ellie, oh. pay attention. Ready? Mm, I don't know. Uh, that's a nice thing. That was like, yeah, that's the thing I'm doing that today. Oh, well, Ellie, want another one? Big hug, big hug, big hug. Oh, thank you. Very happy now. See how she's clicking, man? I discovered that dolphins are excellent oh, mimics and pick up human behavior very quickly. Or was it the other way around? <laughs> here we go. Oh, I like to be here. <laughs> hey, okay, let's... And we'll do this. Ready, Ellie, ready? And I got a thing. And I got a thing. We're davening. Okay, this way. And here we go. This way. Oh, and the thing be going. And look, there's a stair. <laughs> All right. I'm working for kisses now. She's going. <laughs> Basically, I'm going. When I get my kiss. Another hug. Another hug. Hug. Good, because you almost lost your thing. I know. I almost did. I sensed it. <laughs> You're going to be a trainer. Say goodbye. Goodbye, Robin. Goodbye. She'll wave to you. Bye bye. Another kiss and another bite, just one more, and the last one. And a hug. Okay. Bye-bye. I felt it was like the first day of kindergarten, and I'd made a friend. <laughs> I'll miss her, and I wonder if she misses me. <laughs> Ellie's in the first stages of her education, but some of the more advanced students can understand complex commands even when presented on a television screen. They can even understand me. Very few animals understand pictures or photographs. One day on a whim, Dr. Herman decided to set up a TV underwater. To his surprise, the very first time he showed them sign language on TV, they immediately understood it. No way. The sign for hoop and the sign for through. Okay, dude. Okay, I can go through the hoop. So dolphins are sophisticated animals, even if they do enjoy watching television. How is this intelligence useful to them in the wild? In Bull Creek, South Carolina, there's a group of wild bottlenose dolphins that display some very savvy cunning although it doesn't quite look that way initially. At first, it looks like they're in danger of beaching themselves. What they're really doing is feeding. These dolphins have found a novel way of catching fish. Working together, they push a school of mullet onto a beach. Their bow wave does much of the work. Then they pick the fish off one by one. Dolphins are the only fully aquatic animals that have learned to feed on land. And for some reason, known only to themselves, they always slide back on their right sides. dolphins are some of the most adaptable of all the dolphin family. They're found in every ocean of the world, from the Pacific to the Indian and the Atlantic. I'm in the Bahamas for a first-hand encounter with one of these bottlenose. 
I'm beginning to understand them a little better. And it's time to meet them on their own terms. Out at sea, under the water. Watching these animals, it's hard to imagine that we are still responsible for the death of many thousands of dolphins each year. It's fishing nets that do much of the damage. While the tuna industry kills less than it once did, drift netting in the ocean still drowns a quarter of a million of these animals every year. They're too beautiful and too precious for that kind of treatment. These bottlenose weigh over 500 pounds, but they've been trained to swim with divers in the open ocean. Even so, I can't help feeling a little nervous, given what happened on our first eight. As you see here, this is another pool. This is God's pool, and we're about to go in. So wish us luck, because there's dolphins and other things. <laughs> we're hoping for the best. There they are, big. Fast and waiting. Right. Got a little bit of the pre dive nerves. Time to time, I will check your pressure again. Just to remember, this means. Let me put this. Okay, yeah, you pull that. Okay, that inflates. Yeah, that's my extra one in case first one breaks off. Okay, that goes. Okay, that goes up my ass. That's fine. Okay, okay. Oh, God, help me. This isn't worth it. But it is. No, it isn't.
it's amazing. <laughs> Swimming with them is incredible. Yeah? What are you doing? Beaten up by the boat right now, it's even more. Another good day. God. When you're underwater, try to crank up to them. Even doing that dolphin thing, that kick, or the tank on and everything else, you feel basically like a sumo wrestler trying to do a speed swim. <laughs> and then they basically, they're Carl Lewis. And I'm Fatty Arbuckle. <laughs> and they come up to you really fast and then stop on dime. Where do they stop and they just look at you like, Hi, hi, how are you? You're gonna be here? Bye. God. This is the traditional dolphin goodbye. A shark. Did you say shark? What? Where? He's actually humming to himself. Can't believe it. They are the soundtrack. I was glad the sharks hadn't turned up a few minutes earlier when I was actually in the water. It was a timely reminder of the dangers of the deep, because that's where we're going to be on the next stage of our journey. now in the northern Bahamas. We're going out beyond the coral islands to find a remarkable group of spotted dolphins. It's a week-long trip into the blue. Our trusty captain, Dan Samus, set the course using traditional nautical methods of feet. Out of sight of land for the first time, I'm struck by the vastness of the ocean. I'm in dolphin territory at last, but how are we going to find them in all this blue? If anyone knows where to find them, it's Denise Herzing. She's been studying spotted dolphins for 10 years. She has gotten to know 100 individuals, and she's given each one a name. Suddenly, there was a little dolphin on the bow. It was much more slender and delicate than a bottlenose. Spotted dolphins like to bow ride, so we kept on, full steam ahead. And soon, a larger dolphin joined in. Hey, great wave speed. I felt like I could reach out and touch them. But no sooner had the dolphins appeared than they were gone. And there was nothing we could do about it. These were wild dolphins. for dolphins. It's 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> Even the dolphins are going, why, why? It's a beautiful time. It's more than beautiful, it's gorgeous. God, it's amazing. By midday, we had given up. It was time to move on. Ready to go? Suddenly, there were fins on the bow, and quite a few of them. Fins on the starboard bow. Sometimes they turn and look at you as they fly on the bow wave. What's up, my main mammal? Check it out.
regular core group, a lot of the regular animals we see. Some of these males have actually been associated for 10 years pretty heavily. So these are the spotted dolphins we're after. But will they stay? There are very few places in the world where you can actually swim with spotted dolphins. It's not that easy. By the time the boat has come to a stop, often they've gone. But Denise knew these particular dolphins were likely to stay. I think go ahead. I think they might be out of the bow. There's a couple of cords. Going under the boat. There's some out of the right port in right. our stern here, too. So here goes. 40 miles from land, open sea, 50 feet of water. This is it. A wild encounter. The site is magical. I felt suspended there. They were all around me, 20 or 30 all together. They seemed like they were just cruising. I tried to follow. I tried to swim with them. But it was too hard to keep up, even though they seemed to be going so slow. I found out later on from Denise that this was a teenage gang who'd been annoyed by a bottlenose dolphin nearby. I couldn't believe the noise of all the whistling and squawking. It was like they're in high school, you know, hanging out. Wow, man, check out the furry guy with the fins, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, man, don't, sho don't shove me, man. Stop it. Man, look at him. <laughs> Ah, oh, look at him float there with the baggy shorts. <laughs> each of the dolphins in the group knows each other intimately. They spend their lives together, though alliances may change. I began to meet the members of the group that Denise knows so well. She distinguishes them by their different spot patterns and other markings. There's Katie, who has a scar above the eye, possibly a shark attack or a fight with another dolphin. This is Mel. He's a baby. You see, he develops his spots later. There's Romeo. He's a grandfather. And that's Knuckles. But the dolphin I was to know best was Stubby, an older, darker male. He got his name from his chopped off dorsal fin. Stubby, my kind of mammal. All the dolphins have a very special high-pitched whistle, like a call sign, often accompanied by a trail of bubbles. Apparently, all dolphins have this signature whistle, the equivalent of a human name. They can do more than just say their own names. They can also imitate other dolphins' whistles and say, Hey, Stubby! Dolphins are one of the few animals that can call each other by name. A group of dolphins is a close family that is constantly talking and communicating with each other. They have a language of whistles and pulses of sound, but no one has cracked the code yet. That looks like a young dolphin underneath. No spots yet. Bringing up the rear are two dark male dolphins, maybe to protect the youngsters. They could be 30 years old. There's so much noise underwater as dolphins interact, sonar and squawk at each other. Here, a mother gently calms her babbling youngster. I watched a dolphin rounding up two kids. Dolphins often babysit for each other. The babysitters can be male or female. And then a male came in, buzzing his sonar like mad. He was making for the female, buzzing and clicking her from underneath, using sound vibrations to excite her, a little acoustic foreplay. And then it happened. The two pressed together, only for an instant, with the male underneath. 
and it was over. Wow. That was quick, but good for me. Denise filmed another mating on her video camera. In front of Captain Dan, there was another couple who were briefly belly to belly before breaking apart. Dolphin sex only takes a moment, but they love to do it. In fact, dolphins are one of the few animals other than humans who have sex for fun. We've got the water foreplay. <laughs> it was behind the blue door. Yeah? Oh, very beautiful, though. After swimming a couple of hours in the weightlessness of the water, climbing into the bow was quite a struggle. Big time, uh, a bit of the, uh, hello, madam. Oh, it was amazing. The male chilling underneath the female. I think we had a little bit of fun. <laughs> Good luck getting that one by the center. <laughs> They checked us out, there was like a quick pass. They came out by the camera, and the little ones especially. I think, it's true, I think you're right. The little ones come, it's kind of like the adults say, now look at the humans, go on, we'll be here. They kind of give you a pass, they check you out. It was kind of playful for a second, and that was almost like mom went, come I told you not to do that. <laughs> you come when I click. The equivalent of, don't make me come over there and bite you. <laughs> so we had a lot of different behavior going on, but it was fun because he wanted to play with you. He or she, I don't know, I couldn't. But he got trouble for it. Yeah, he got like, he wanted to like swim in circles and kind of do this, and mom was like, come along. <laughs> if she could, it'd be like, bite by the dorsal, come you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> come on, your father and I want to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> It's like this, they swim over top of each other, so a little kind of circular stuff, and kind of, hey, hey, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, I like it behind there. <laughs> if you can get me right here by the dorsal, it's my, uh, my aquitanius zone. And all of a sudden, it was just like, boom, turned over, and all of a sudden, it was like, literally like this. It was like, hey, hey, thank you, my. And it was like, is that it? <laughs> and it may have happened, well, I don't know. <laughs> We're far enough away, and they're going like, yeah, that should hold the humans for a while. <laughs> Denise Hersing has also studied the dolphin's unique use of sound to get food. Here's one of her videotapes showing dolphins looking for fish like flounders and small razorfish buried in the sand. The noise that sounds like an electric razor is actually the whining and clicking sonar that may not only locate the fish, but may be so loud as to stun them too. Being out in the ocean with dolphins is a strange business where one day seems to run into another. It's often breathlessly hot, but I was here to work and you have to keep going. It's brutal work. Well, not all the time. I thought I would have been living off seasickness pills, but it's been nice. I dream of dolphins and fish. Not for me. Right on. Oh, oh. Here's our captain proving that dolphins aren't the only ones who catch fish. What we're doing now is using uh, a can opener. Things that dolphins can't do, and quite happy they can't. Come close for a real close-up of physical ineptitude. Here we go. Ah. Come on. Ah. Ah. There. With any luck and a good set of teeth, we'll be eating maybe next year. You know, another way to open this is erosion. <laughs> it takes a little bit longer, but if you leave it out at sea, eventually nature has its way and opens a can of beans. I don't know why we're eating beans on a small boat. Frightening concept to be having black beans and chili on a small boat. Ooh, get to know your neighbor. <laughs> this will be one of the strangest documentaries ever made, I think. Full of scientific information and an occasional fart joke. But part of our program is to entice you, entertain you, and educate you. <laughs> this all this old experience is so incredible. Oh, oh Christ. Oh.
Over the days, we had several encounters, but there was still one thing I wanted to do. Find the wise old dolphin called Stubby. I was really hoping he'd reappear. In the 11th hour, I got my wish. He was the Stub Man. Stubby? The older boy, Stubby. Stubby's the one with the chopped off dorsal fin. He's right near us right now. He's just pulled away. Right there. Right there, he just came up. Going down. He's coming up right now. Hi, Stubby. Now, people think Stubby refers to something, and Stubby says that's just a fin. Everything else is fully intact. Catch my drift. After a while, they peeled elegantly off the bow like blue angels, and they just waited for us. And all of a sudden, there was Stubby, inviting me to swim with him. I tried some tricks. Sometimes he swam with me and sometimes I swam with him. And sometimes we just swam eye to eye, mutually curious. different than being in the company of the young teenage dolphins who seemed to be kind of laughing at me. It was like being in the presence of someone wise, someone who's seen years of life in the ocean, a lot of hard times and good times, and survived it all. Another intelligence. I felt very peaceful. Maybe he could detect my mood, because he seemed to be too. getting late. You know, that peaceful time just before twilight. The water was calm, and it seemed like we were too. Maybe he was picking up my emotion. You know, dolphins can see right through you with their sonar. Maybe he was picking up my heartbeat. Or maybe it was something else. I really would love to know. I'd love to figure out his language, understand what his cooking and whistling meant, make contact. But this was pretty nice. Very close, very, very nice. The mutual observation. Stubby bonded. Me and the stub man. <laughs> he was amazing. <laughs> he just hung with me. I'll be right there. I just think I have to. The weird thing is the earlier encounter with a little dolphin reminded me of playing with Cody. It's very kind of active, playful, like, hey, hi, come on, just running around, but just the way Cody, my son, would run. And be very, it made me homesick for him. I mean, I wish you know, that he, he's just learning to swim, but I know that if Cody were in a place with a dolphin that size, that both of them would have something quite in common. A kind of a playful inquisitiveness of like, you know, that thing that a two and a half year old would do, that anything's possible. And I think that's why the mother keeps grabbing him going, no, it's not. Said, no, no, come here, come here. You don't know all the rules yet. No. Now, Stubby's like, yeah, hey, I know these people. I've swum with them before. I presented myself to them. But with the little ones, it's much more kind of a, it's like a child's energy. It made me like think of Cody immediately. It's just, 
with that energy that he has at 6 o'clock in the morning when I have none. <laughs> I've seen into a dolphin community and watched a little of how they live. They're highly social animals with intimate friendships and alliances. They appear to have a language and an intelligence all their own. They even have their own names. To study these dolphins and record their sounds may one day reap rich rewards. But it feels like I've done more than just observe. In some strange way, I feel that for a moment with Stubby, I communicated with an animal who chose to make contact. If we're really interested in learning to make contact with an alien intelligence, maybe we don't have to look to the edge of the galaxy to find them. They're right here, right on our doorstep, waiting where we came from. That's what makes it interesting, trying to make that connection. So they're like, you know. <laughs> All of a sudden, we go into deliverance. We're the ones with the banjo. Well, I told you we understand. We're pretty evolved. <laughs> I do think they were laughing today, like, ah, ah. I don't know. That's what's the most amazing thing you come away from this with. You learn more, but you still have you know, so much you don't know, which makes it interesting. Mm -hmm.